Hi, I'm Alex McCord, and welcome to The Real Deal on TheStir.com. Today we have Episode 7 of Season 6 of The Real Housewives of New Jersey, as well as Episode 8 of Kim Zolciak's Don't Be Tardy. We are skipping our E! programming from last night because there wasn't any, because we had the MTV Video Music Awards. Well, wow. Did we all think last week that New Jersey was popping nice pills? Well, that's over. Uh, This week there are bombs dropping left, right, and center, both on the show and in the press. On the show, we've got Victoria Gotti's shocking allegations over Reno Apria and his mother-in-law. And in the press, it's that Rosie Pieri's TV girlfriend is just that, for TV only, and she and Ellen Menken never dated. Further, that Ellen was apparently coerced by nefarious means to sign the Real Housewives release and appear on the show. Let's take these one at a time. So what could possibly have possessed Victoria Gotti to stalk Teresa's book signing, invite her over with Amber and drop the bomb that Reno Apria's marriage broke up because he slept with his wife's mother? (laughs) Reno himself says it's not true. See his tweet from last night. This is a salacious story that has been manufactured to cause hurt to my family. I will not play into this. My wife and son are my life. First, although Twitter has been blowing up about Victoria cashing in, I don't imagine that she would have been paid to appear on the show. Typically, the only time anyone who is paid who is not a housewife or a friend of or supporting cast member is when a service provider like a masseuse or a chef is hired by producers, not the ladies, to provide services the ladies would not have booked on their own anyway. So Victoria likely just wanted to stir up trouble and be on television. She said that Reno used to chase her, that he said to her and a table full of people that he cheated on Teresa with Santa. Here's what I think. I go back to the footage we have seen of Reno on the show so far. He is a big, loud personality. When he's in the office in the morning or in the kitchen, he's all business. But when he's out front with the customers, he drinks a lot and talks a lot with that trying to impress sort of demeanor. We all know this type of guy. He's the bon vivant master of the house, pouring drinks for and telling stories to everyone to get them to come back and spend money. Go with me here. It's entirely possible that Reno was divorced from Teresa and angry about it. And angry, tipsy people say all sorts of crazy stuff. If Reno was in the presence of the Victoria Gotti, who was in his restaurant and whom he clearly wanted to impress, perhaps he wanted to shock her. Well, how do you shock Victoria Gotti? Certainly not with mafia stories or money stories or violence stories. You gotta come up with something else. Perhaps he said some crazy BS that occurred to him that no one in his family would ever believe, like sleeping with his mother-in-law. That's my gut feeling on this one so far. And it was told to Victoria in public, so whether she truly believed it or not, she chose to accept it at face value and run with it. See her tweet from last night. Never air your dirty laundry in public to anyone. Victoria, in turn, picked the one person who would trust her without question, Teresa Giudice. Why? Number one, Teresa is a fairly trusting person, which gets her into trouble a lot. Uh, two, Victoria is established on the show as a friend of Teresa's. And three, given the place Teresa was in at the time of filming, Victoria had been there, done that, and was in a position to offer support and advice based on experience that nobody else could. Amber, in this case, was collateral damage. That's my take, so far. Next, let's discuss Rosie Pieri and her girlfriend Ellen Menken, or not, as the press is reporting. Last week on episode six, we saw Ellen at dinner with Rosie, canoodling and looking cute. There was talk of marriage, which Rosie deflected, but with a smile on her face, as though it could be possible at some point. Even even I suggested last week that Rosie might be the first one with a lesbian wedding spinoff. But alas, it is not to be, because Ellen is apparently partnered up with someone else. What? A reality TV blog all about the Real Housewives received copies of emails between Ellen's partner Lisa and executives at Sirens Media and Bravo, begging them not to use the footage of Rosie and Ellen and threatening consequences if their requests were denied. The emails stated that Rosie and Ellen were never partners, that Ellen signed the guest appearance release under duress, coercion, and while she was under the influence of alcohol. And there's a lot more there that I don't need to go into. Ellen and Lisa have been together for years and have children together. And the footage from the show, if shown, would cause emotional distress. We know now that the scenes were aired last week. 
So far, no lawsuits have been filed that I can see, but it does sometimes take time for documents to be filed and get out in the public where you can Google them. So what about all this? Is it possible that a cast member or production company could bully a person onto a reality show? Not the production company, not exactly, but a cast member? Yes, 100% yes, here's how. The producers would want to cover themselves as much as possible, so they might say to Rosie one-on-one, -on -one, you have to produce your girlfriend or else you can't be on the show anymore. We won't film you. Get her to sign a release. So Rosie might find a friend whom she thinks will fit the bill and talk her into filming using whatever means necessary that she might use. They may have shown up at the restaurant to find a production assistant outside with a clipboard who might have said something like, neither of you are welcome here until Ellen signs this paper. It's cold outside, hurry up. And done. Now, whether it is a full housewife or an extra release, the language about the footage is more or less the same. Paraphrasing in my own words, people agree that footage may be used in any way the producers or the network want, causing events to appear that happen that way in real life, that are true, that are fictional, whatever. Once you've filmed both in theory and in practice, there is no recourse. Overall, every time Bravo does a recast of any of the Housewives franchise, they say that the shows have gotten too dark, too toxic. Yet, here we are in a new season with two blatantly producer-engineered dark storylines. Maybe the next time a show gets too dark, Bravo should fire the production company, not the cast. What else happened on New Jersey this week? Well, a nice bit of cross promotion involving untying the knots Vicki Ziegler, who is the divorce attorney for Dina Manzo. The two discuss whether Dina should file now or wait until her daughter leaves for college. Now, one could be forgiven for thinking that this was a scene dreamed up in a product placement meeting at 30 Rock. It makes sense that it would be, except it wasn't. <laughs> Due to knowing some of the people involved, I can report that Vicky working with Dina was a complete coincidence, which once again goes back to why reality TV is so addictive. Sometimes you really truly can't make this stuff up and truth is stranger than fiction. Moving right along, we missed the Kardashians last night as a casualty of the MTV Video Music Awards, so I watched Don't Be Tardy, which is once again on Sunday nights. Now, Sunday is a much better night than Thursday for ratings, so if this is a permanent move, it's definitely a good thing for Kim and her brood. Really, the only behind-the-scenes information I picked up this week was the placement of their campsite. From the episode-long setup, I thought they were really truly going into the middle of nowhere, but there's nowhere and then there's TV nowhere. While the family clearly were in the woods, their producers would have had to have electricity and easy parking for the crew and equipment. They would have to have had permits from the state park in which they filmed and it would have been a big deal. Therefore, there would be no bears. They're not completely off the grid. Kim made a meal out of being afraid, thinking they'd be eaten and buying crazy hunting camouflage. The whole episode to me seemed like they were protesting way too much in order to be funny. Now they did deliver a funny episode in the same pattern as the rest of their series, but it just kind of felt fake to me. What about you? Let me know what you thought in the comments and what do you think about Rosie and about Victoria and Reno and the mother-in-law? Sound off and tell me what you think. For now, I am Alex McCord. You're watching The Real Deal on the Stir.com. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube and I'll see you tomorrow.